Uh oh. It says you're live. What do you think? What does that mean? I don't know. I think it means, oh my gosh, it went live at one o'clock. Oh, ah! ah! Exactly on time. Welcome, Everyone. everybody. I'm being very Viking y today. Yes. You'll... We have the whole gang here. We're all ready to write. Welcome, 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 welcome to our virtual write in. If you have not been to a virtual write-in before, just to kind of briefly explain, this is a uh, safe space for everybody to kind of write as much of whatever they want. And this is a whole community of writers just writing together. Uh, we do sprints here, which is basically just a short prompt where we you know, answer a question or a specific uh, prompt that's given. And we do it in a specific time frame, and you write as much as you possibly can in that time frame. But you don't necessarily have to follow that prompt if you're already working on something. So let's get busy. First, we want to introduce everyone. Um, I am Nina. I go by he or I go by she, her, um, and I am the programs intern here at NanoRimo. Hi, I'm Freddie, editorial intern. They them. Um, should we clarify the pronouns of our squad? I think I think we should. Okay, Blobby. He, him, mm -hmm. Sporty, the Space Corgi, Sporty Spice, she, her, Sprump, the latest edition, they, them, and uh, yeah. That's the whole crew. So if you get the pronouns wrong, you're canceled. And then let's also introduce you guys as well in the comment section. So uh, tell us where you're coming from. Tell us, you know, pronouns that you'd like to go by. Tell us your names if you'd like to, even though, you know, a lot of people already have their names as their uh, uh, profile names and everything. But uh, introduce yourselves. Let us know who you are, where you're from. We're coming in through uh, Berkeley, California right now. And so, yeah, that's where we'll be chatting in with you guys. Mm -hmm. So let's hear where some other people are. Uh, someone's from Denmark, Sien Viemos Jesperson. Ooh. Fun. Lovely otters from Canada. Nice. Aren't all otters lovely though? Aren't all, all otters are lovely. I would just like to say that. Now. I know that like every, it's common knowledge by now that otters hold hands when they're sleeping yes. so they don't drift apart from each other. Yes. But it's worth repeating. It's worth remembering. Yes. We live in a magical world. Yes. Uh, YM Nelson is checking in from Charlotte, North Carolina. She, her. Nice. Yeah, thanks for giving pronouns. Let's make that a thing that we do. Yeah. Of course, for you, he, him, from Florida. Okay. Salem, Oregon, she, her, Audrey. Lots Hello, cool Rosemary people. Tiger. Lots of cool people coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Essex, England. Ooh. MV McKenzie. Otters are very endangered. We need to help them. We do need to help them. We need yeah. to help bees, too. We need to help the bees. What else do we need to help? I don't know, people. Just the environment in general. Yeah, just go out there, <laughs> smell a flower. Um, While you still plant, can. Plant a tree. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So it seems like a lot of people are coming in from a lot of cool different places. Um, it's nice to have such a wide audience. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we kick this off by getting into our pro or getting into our whole theme, which is winning NaNoWriMo. Yes, which starts today. Which starts today. So winning starts today, um, and therefore our entire theme will be about winning NaNoWriMo. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to just click the button down below to subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified every time we do one of these virtual write-ins or any other uh, YouTube resources that we have as well. Other people are saying um, animals we should tell. Sunai Sunai, Eyes Like Cole says pandas. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Warner says polar bears. Oh my gosh. Uh, Claire Boyle says bees and bats, oh especially gosh. bats. Okay, so we really need to help the environment. Yeah. Bald eagles. Oh, yeah, that's right. Aren't bald eagles, like, going extinct if they're not God. already? Things just aren't going well for... Gosh. Okay, okay. Well. Focusing on writing. Let's go into our first sprint. Um, again, you don't have to follow the prompt if you don't want to. If you're already working on something or you'd like to continue on your novel, feel free to do that, especially if this prompt doesn't necessarily work with what you're already writing. However, if you'd like some inspiration, our first prompt is going to be using one of the three words that I'm about to list to write a scene. 
So you can use victory, prize, or accomplishment. You're going to use one of those three words to write out a scene. Okay, this prompt's going to be for, what do you say, Freddie? How long are we going to do this prompt for? Let's do five minutes. Five we minutes. did a weird numbers last time, and uh, it was now very you, stressful. <laughs> now you want to go back to regular time? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have five minutes for this prompt. And again, the prompt is use one of these three words to write a sentence. Victory, prize, and accomplishment. All right. Pencils ready. Keyboards ready. Here we go. Three, two, one, write. Bless you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.
time is up. That silent chime that tells us to stop writing. How'd that go? Going pretty good. Good. How'd you do, Freddie? Um, let's see. Let me count. One, two. I did 156. Nice. Oh, good job. Thank you. Good job. You. And how did you all do? How was the writing prompt for you? Uh, put in your word counts or favorite sentences uh, that you wrote in the comments section. And then one of the questions that I have that I would love to ask people in addition to this is, what does success mean to you? Mm. So to me, Success basically means accomplishing something related to a goal that you have. So, for example, if you have, I don't know, a 50,000 word goal for a writing challenge that you're taking part in this year for an entire month, and you only get 10,000 words down, that's still definitely a success because no matter what you achieved the writing goal. You got yourself to go out of your way to actually put down words on a piece of paper and start something that you later could finish and um, develop into a really nice story. So um, I think that success doesn't necessarily mean finishing the task. I think it means pushing yourself towards the goal that you're trying to achieve and actually doing something about it. Hmm. I think success for me is just like, just the, the establishing of, of habits. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. I think as long as you write more consistently mm -hmm. than you usually do, and I would like it if people sustained that more consistent writing okay. schedule past November, but I guess you don't have to. That's true. But if, if I, I think success is kind of is altering how you approach writing so thinking of it more as habit as kind of a constant practice rather than something i don't know like temporary well rather than something temporary i was gonna the opposite when i rather than something like like a solitary goal that you achieve oh, i've um, written a short story i've written a novel it's like i i think that thinking about it in terms of like i am always writing something mm -hmm and I'm always putting words to the page. Mm -hmm. It's a more healthy way of looking at it. For sure. I agree. But what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Um, what Let's are people see. saying in the comments? Well, we got a lot of people. Uh, Nicknamed Girl 3, in response to how the writing prompt mm -hmm. went, says, good. Good. Um, and then, yeah, I hope everyone did Good. Yeah. Let's see, we also have some some excerpts. Let's okay. see. Uh, lovely Otter again. People around me were cheering and yelling, screaming my name. I'd won. My teammates were hugging me and screaming my name. I'd won. My parents were in the audience screaming my name. I'd won. Nice. Mm, I like that. I, I, I recognize the the feeling. Yeah. I mean, I like the use of repetition. It mm -hmm. really drives the nail in that you won. <laughs> yeah. And it's also like the, the the screaming of the name, the chanting of the mm -hmm. name. It feels very victorious. Yeah. From Elizabeth Bridges, victory! Crowley yelled, flinging himself dramatically into the bookshop, his gangly arms waving in the air. Nice. I think anytime you, you can go into a bookshop is, is, is a kind of victory, yeah. for sure. Um, let's see, Holly Miles says, this is in response to your question about success, mm -hmm. says success is happiness for me. So you're successful if you're happy or happiness leads to success? Yeah, I hope it's um, happiness is like, like the first thing you said. Because mm -hmm. I feel like if success, if you're expecting success to lead to happiness, mm -hmm. then you might run into some right. <laughs> problems. Uh, let's see. Linda Lisa says, Freddie's hair is fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Thank shout you. Shout out to Freddie's should I not, hair. Should I not have read that one? That one seems self-serving. <laughs> no, shout out to Freddie's hair. Uh, Danielle Saints, the success is trusting my imagination when I force myself to write. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good one. Um, yeah, let's see. A lot of I like this. I like these. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bandy Crawford says success is creating a life that isn't perfect but makes you smile daily. Aww. I like that people are taking it as success in general rather than success as NaNoWriMo. Right. I think that actually illustrates a healthy relationship with NaNoWriMo. Yeah. And not looking at, you know, the one month as the only metric of success. Yeah. And that people are thinking bigger. Yeah. Mm. Definitely thinking towards like actual writing goals as opposed to just goals for <laughs> November. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's good mm -hmm. ideas. Here's something that we could all kind of think about. Sure. Elizabeth Bridges says, success is transient, to be honest. It never satisfies for long, for mm. me at least. What do you think of that? I don't know. I, I still, I still kind of relish the fact that I was able to complete a novel mm. while I was still in high school. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really big accomplishment. So it's like something me, that so. sticks with you. It's definitely something that sticks yeah. with me. And I, it, sticks with me even more because I actually have a tangible copy mm -hmm. of my book. It's a prototype, but um, I actually have like the physical book itself and yeah. I can touch it and I can read it and everything like that. So it's definitely a compl an accomplishment that sits with me. But for other things, I think that that can be applied mm -hmm. to um, certain life circumstances, especially if you like get something and then somebody has something that's better than what you have. And then mm. jealousy starts to play a role, mm. and your success doesn't really mean anything to you as much. I think there's also like there can be something motivating about never being satisfied. True. With, like you know, you can keep moving the goalposts and keep moving forward. Uh, Mikkel Morgan says success is showing up and doing your best. I think that's a that's a valid. That's a great metric. definition of success. I think especially like doing your best, like specifically what you kind of are capable of mm -hmm. to the best of your abilities. I think that was something I had to learn. That was a very valuable thing to learn is that everyone's best isn't the same. Right. Like people are good at things, people are bad at things. But if people are doing it, it doesn't really it doesn't really like metrics of good and bad stop mm -hmm. mattering as much. Right. Well, thank you guys for sharing all those yeah. lovely that comments. Got, it got pretty personal. Yeah. <laughs> we got real deep into mm -hmm. it. But let's pull out of that really quickly and go right into our second prompt. And in this one, we're going to do a little bit of playing around with characters. So, as always, you don't necessarily have to follow this prompt if it doesn't fit with your theme of the book or anything like that. But um, for this prompt, we'd like you to introduce your character to a situation where they have won something. Mm. It can be a game. It can be like a challenge or it can be an argument or something along those lines. Anything, really. So, um we're going to be doing this prompt for about 10 minutes. About 10 minutes? Or about exactly 10, 10 minutes? No, we're going to do this for 9 minutes and 59 seconds, Whoa. Freddie. Whoa. Um, no, we'll be doing this whole prompt for 10 minutes. That's consistent writing. And the prompt is, again, if you, um, if you need a reminder, the prompt is to introduce your character to a situation where they've won something. It can be a game, a challenge, an argument, anything. Ten minutes starting in three, two, one, right.
Time is up. Finish whatever you are writing. If you're already done writing, lift your hands from your keyboards, put your pencil or pen down, whatever medium you are writing on. And let's talk about that. How'd it go? How'd you do? I got 297 that time. Nice. What did I get? <clears throat> Set down your typewriter. <laughs> Set down your typewriter. Um, let's see. Oh, you're fine. I got 155 words that time. Um, how did you all do? Drop word counts in the comments. Drop um, sentences that you wrote. And then let's also talk about... What crook? <laughs> Let's also talk about how important is it to plan for success, or does that benefit everybody? So, um, for example, to me, uh, the true definition of success does not necessarily, um, since many people have different definitions of success, success is important to me, but only in the sense that I actually um, put my mind towards something and accomplish it and make myself happy. And sometimes it benefits me, but um, in the case of school, for example, there are a lot of different interpretations of success surrounding school, one of them being that you finish it mm. um, and get whatever degree or diploma that you um, are gearing towards. And so um, that type of success may not necessarily benefit every single person because not very many people, uh, there, there are a few people who don't necessarily um, finish college in four years. They finish it in six or some people don't necessarily finish college because it's not their cup of tea, which is also fine. And so, you know, I think that success doesn't necessarily have to benefit everybody. But I do think that success can be important if you have a specific goal that you want to accomplish. I also think there's just intrinsic value hmm. of learning. Learning. Like I thought, I think if I had graduated from college without a degree, um, 
uh, like if, if if it hadn't been like a uh, like a measured thing, right? Like mm -hmm. if there wasn't like the the end goal of like graduation, I still mm -hmm. think I would have enjoyed it, and I still think I would feel like I'd accomplished something. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't know where my diploma is. It's somewhere. And I, I didn't go do, like, the, the graduation ceremony or anything like that. You didn't um, frame your diploma no. and sit out in the hot sun for hours no. while you watched other people walk across the stage only to wait for two minutes so that way you can walk across the stage? No. Because I'm a cool rebel. I, um, I feel that if that were the case, if school had no specific value like like if, if accomplishing school meant anything it didn't mean you graduating and getting the degree i think i would still enjoy school for the most part um mm -hmm. especially classes that have less lecturing and more activity or um application to life because i really enjoy classes where teachers kind of take the curriculum and put it into a real life perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think I would enjoy those classes more. What did I what are other people saying? Let's see. What's the chatter? Well, we, the chat? we can we can we can check in with people how they've done on um, on the thing. Mm -hmm. Like anything Agatha has a helpful note for us. Mm -hmm. it says I notice you guys make like a blank expression when you're deep in writing. My family says I do that too. <laughs> Is my does my mouth just kind of hang open? Because I always feel like I catch myself just kind of I always then I have to like close it. <laughs> I always feel like so. There was one time I was writing in front of a couple of friends. Yeah. And I was I was deep into story mode, you know, or like I was I was really focusing. I think I was writing a research paper or something, and I had to meet a specific deadline, and so I was just focusing solely on the writing. And they told me later they were like, "You you know you scrunch your face up when you write." Mm -hmm. Like you look mad when you write, and I'm like, oh, "What are yeah. you talking about?" I do that too when I'm writing, like an into like an angry. Mm -hmm. Actually, it happens to me more when I when I'm drawing, like mm -hmm. when I'm drawing like an angry person. I'm like, oh. mm -hmm. But apparently, I just do that when I write anything. I love it. If it's a love scene, if it's you know, a horror uh, genre, if it's just like I'm angry at the character at the moment, it doesn't matter. I'm just writing like I'm angry. Apparently. All right. So uh, Ellen Porter. Mm -hmm. Here we're getting into excerpts now. Ooh. Says, uh, "Wow," she thought to herself, "I beat grandmothers who have been making bread since uh, before they were my age. I won, and it's my first time I ever tried to make anything like this." Nice. I love that. Nice. Especially love the specificity of it. Mm, bread. Yes. <laughs> Carbs. Let's see. Um, Megan D says, "My uh oh, just lost oh. it." Megan D, no, no, oh, oh no, <laughs> Megan D, you had a great favorite comment. line. You had a great line from your passage, and I'm sure that I found it. There we go. She said, "My favorite line that I have written so far. If people come here asking what oysters are, say you don't know." <laughs> I love it. That's a good line. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I don't. I barely know what oysters are. TV. I get I so get I shellfish. get I get oysters, clams, and mussels confused. Mm -hmm. I know what mussels are because they're long and mm -hmm. have black shells and they're mm -hmm. orange. Mm -hmm. What? That is my favorite. What? Um. Huh. Let's see. I Diane don't eat Smith shellfish. Says, if you not as much as I used to, at least if you <laughs> couldn't tell. Good. Uh, Diane Smith says uh, she had been determined to show him that being a woman didn't mean being weak. This was an argument she would win one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, definitely a valid thing to prove. Yeah. And not an argument that's uh, difficult to win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hero songs is stumbling headlong into the cold water of the riverbed. I was covered in mud. I looked around at the piles of bones and the hangman's noose high above me. The symbol of the dead that walked to this land. Mm -hmm. Very atmospheric. Uh, very spooky. Very spooks. Why are there so many? Why are people writing so much spooky stuff? Because Halloween was last month. <laughs> yeah, but all right. <laughs> Is there normally a lot of? Uh, I have no idea if there's like a lot of Halloween themed or horror slash suspense novels mm -hmm. just because. 
October's right before November. Mm. I don't know if that's like a whole thing or not, but like that's probably a explan an explanation. Uh, quick, give me a name for a little brother. Mm -hmm. Give me a name. name. Oh, 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 um, Joseph. Okay, Julia D. The name for your main character's little brother is Joseph. I'm sorry if someone. Oh shoot, other people answered Ethan. Ooh, Joseph. I is like a better it. name. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's better. I think it's just different. I think it. It depends on what exactly this character is doing or their personality in the actual novel. Maybe they are a Joseph. Maybe mm. they are an Ethan. It kind of just depends. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to sound dismissive. I, I mean, agree. I mean, Joseph also is just a You know what? I, I, maybe I don't agree. I don't think Do you people, I don't think names like fit people. Really? I think the only reason that people think that is because they meet someone who has a very strong personality mm -hmm. with that name mm -hmm. and then that like becomes like this archetype for that name and i think Fair. it speaks more to experience than anything intrinsic about that's true names. i really don't get a whole lot of people saying i look like anina yeah and uh have you ever had somebody come up to you and say you know you look like a freddy no <laughs> so there you a go a lot of people think that i look like a jeffrey which i don't know why but that offends me you know what you know what Name your character's little brother Freddy. Just do that. Yes, Just name do it. Freddy. Okay. Um, Any others? Let's see. Lieber Snowy is obsessed with the crook, and so is Namita Sharma. And I just don't know what crook you're ta they're talking about. It's very mysterious. Oh, that's and for the record, we have no association with any wizards or anything like that. Just mentioning that. Just. Casually don't even mentioning know, that. Don't even know what a Gandalf is. No. That from that from that from Harry Potter or <laughs> something. <laughs> All right. Um, are we are we are we gearing up for that final thing, or should I should We're I? We're gearing find, up for this final more? thing. Okay. So last prompt. Last prompt. Okay. So for our third prompt, we're going to switch things around a little bit. So this time, have your character think back on a time when they lost a challenge and how it's inspired them to push towards success. So have your character think about, you know, an uh, argument that they had or um, some time when they were just knee deep in a challenge and then they lost how they felt and everything like that. So have your character think back on a time when they lost a challenge and how it's inspired them to push towards success. Since it is 140, I think we can do another 10 minute prompt and then we can talk about it for another 10 minutes and be good to go. All right. Sound good? It sounds good to me. Perfect. It sounds like it sounds, sounds so like good. sounds like perfect timing, right? What does our what do all of our pals think in the middle? By the way, I don't I know if you can all... tell, but Nina and I can't like we can barely see each other. <laughs> oh, we can barely see each other. We're only at like eye level with each other yeah. because we built a wall of <laughs> anyways. Um so ten minute prompt. Have your character think back on a time when they lost a challenge and how it's inspired them to push towards success. Again, you don't have to follow the prompt if it doesn't fit with your novel or whatever you are writing, but if it works for you, go with it. 10 minutes in three, two, one, write.
and time is up. Finish what you are working on if you're working on something. If you've gotten done, then go ahead and stop right there. And how was that for everyone? Sorry, I was just finishing up what I was writing. But how was that for everybody? Had a good time. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Okay. Staring over our wall here. <laughs> um, I had a good time as well. Let's see. Trying to see where exactly I left off. Well, for what it's worth, I did 317 words. I also want to address something I saw while we were writing. Puppies Forever said, I just had to erase a lot of words because it sounded silly. Okay. Don't do that, Puppies Forever. Yeah, don't do that. That's your, that's your, whole that's your inner editor. Yeah, get rid of them. Just get rid of month. it. Just for this month. The Put whole those words back in. Just get the word count in. Um, to follow up with you, not that it's a competition or anything, but... Did you win? I did get 351 words. Unbelievable. What's your total? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, I think my total is, so for the first two prompts, I really wasn't working on this that much, but. All right, whatever. Um, whatever helps you sleep at night. 506 was my total for this whole mm. virtual write-in, which is still really good. One was seven something. Nice. Good job. Thank I want you. a fist bump. Oh, oh. That was going to be a high five. It can be both. That was upsetting. Yeah. That was very upsetting. <laughs> um. How did everybody else do? Looks like people did real good. How did the people do? The people. You are the people. Let's see. Sounds like people did real, real well. Yeah. Um, Strays of the Beyond said I got a good amount of words even though I joined late. Nice. Excellent. Good job. Um, let's see, nickname girl three, hello mm -hmm. again. So my favorite part was, they tied up the poor dragon who put up a big fight, might I add. We were helpless to take back the dragon We watch it fly away. Mm -hmm. We understand our defeat. Mm -hmm. mm. It's on, on theme, yeah. for sure. It's really mm -hmm. I like... I don't know. I can't tell whose side we're supposed to like. Are we on? Are we on the dragon Poor dragon side? put up a or... big fight. Help us take back the dragon. Yeah. Or is it some bad guys stole a dragon? Uh, we feel see. bad for everyone. How mm -hmm. about that? Just we we feel for everybody. Tesla the writer uh, says my main character is having a flashback to when she crashed a plane, had all his friends on it. Spoiler alert: only he survived. That would be unpleasant. Yeah. I don't think I'd, I'd enjoy being responsible for all my friends dying. Yeah, no. That'd be a real bummer. That would be real a scale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, good job. Yeah. Gosh, I would hope that I wouldn't be ever responsible for that happening. Mm -hmm. I would hate to be in that situation. Wow, people, people are putting in their monthly totals and people are getting real close to winning. Nice. I saw Good someone had, um, okay, Allison Opson Clement is spreading lies. Says there was a wooden crook like a wizard staff or shepherd in the corner. Freddie moved it. I don't, that's just, that's you just, don't know? That's just, just being dishonest in the chat. I, I, don't, I don't, not a fan of that. No. Um, <laughs> see, Elizabeth Bridges says, well, how are customers ever supposed to find what they're looking for? The books aren't alphabetized. The demon snaps. <laughs> Seriously, though, how are people supposed to find exactly what they're looking for if it's not alphabetized? You know, I like when things aren't alphabetized. I love, like, like you know, bargain bins and, like, you you're know, Walmart. A, you're where you such get a, a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> you get, like, I don't know, found fun movies when things aren't alphabetized. I love that, but, like, only in the circumstances of, like, movies. Like, I, I can't, I can't go into a library for example or or not even a library i can't go into a bookstore for example 
and um, and not have the books be alphabetized and categorized by their genre. Like, how am I supposed to find romance if it's stuck in with the sci-fi, which is stuck you in look with for the, the non You books with the dude with the ripped chest. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but then how am I supposed to find J.K. Rowling if she's mixed in with, uh, I don't know, James Baldwin? <laughs> yeah. Because people alphabetize by last name, not first name, apparently. Right. Like, how am I supposed to? How am I supposed to figure that out? <laughs> see, see. What else do we have going on? Um, a lot of debate about bargain bins. We're gonna skip over that. Debate about bargain. Katie bins. says, "Yes, how is the demon supposed to find that comic?" I don't know. Probably follow the the sick feeling in the pit of your stomach at, at holding a book that's temptably evil. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, looking for new, looking for new, 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 new steps. Rosemary Tiger checks in, says she's at 34,000 words, 337,000, 34, shoot, 34,337 out of 50,000. Excellent. That's right on track, right, for today? That is right on track. Mm -hmm. That's, let, let's see, that's like close to what, 35? It's a little under 35. And you'd have 15. Yeah, anything Agatha says, my words are getting bland since I'm writing in present tense and using I and say stuff like that. Any advice? No, not really. Um, you can, if, if it's just like a back and forth between two people, you can just say, like, you can stop saying words of dialogue attribution. Mm -hmm. And also, I, writing in the present tense, I don't think limits your vocabulary that much. It's yeah. just, it just has to do with how you conjugate verbs. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, there are like those charts out there that have like a whole array of things where yeah. it's like you can like find a word and then you can go more and more specific. Mm -hmm. So looking for one of those might help. Um, those, I, I found those useful if I'm, if I'm getting bored of the words that I'm using. Mm -hmm. I agree with your first comment that you don't necessarily need to, uh, narrate who's saying what in your dialogue. Um, I know in, in stories that I've written in the past, a lot of the times what I what I would do is I would read um, a lot of stories that were similar to the genre that I was writing in. And what I've noticed is that a lot of the times um, whenever writers have very long streams of dialogue, mm -hmm. it's just the dialogue. You don't see any yeah. like he said, she said, they said, we said. You don't see the, the extraness of, you know, like, who's saying what necessarily. You just see the back and forth, especially if it's between um, just two people. If it's between more than two people, um, you may need to kind of add in who exactly is, spec or who exactly is saying um, a specific comment, but that's also really easy to embed. Um, I like doing embedded quotations and embedded dialogue. So a lot of the times what I'll do is, you know, I'll say, um, a specific part of the quote, say this is the person that said it, and then continue the quote, and then have the dialogue go back and forth again. Yeah. Here's a here's an excerpt from Pink Cow. Yes. Gretel down the black espresso in one go. I'd seen her do this many times, but how she was capable of swallowing that never ceased to appall me. I shook my head and sipped my creamer. Nice. I like that. I like that too. I would also sip creamer. <laughs> a lot of people are asking for one more prompt. One more prompt. Unfortunately. Well, if, do you think do would or do people get annoyed if we go longer than an hour? Do you want to do another prompt? Which is like a them out? quick two minute prompt. Let's do, let's do another five minute one. Okay. Settle on three. We'll do a three minute prompt. Okay. Just for the sake of people, because people probably have places to go. <laughs> well, these people are saying they don't. These people are just well, begging you know, for it. Prompt. Okay, spur of the moment prompt. Okay, um, um, Sporgy shows up in your story for some reason, and you got to figure out why. Three minutes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I think that I. I, I think that us assuming that that rhymos have anything to do is is pretty bold. <laughs> I think they have everything. I think these are all indoor kids who uh, <laughs> got but, nothing going on. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. 
So you introduce Sporgy somewhere into your novel, and she's a huge success wherever you introduce her. Donald Anderson says, Eddie's in the space-time continuum, to which I have to say, is he? Oh my gosh. Okay. Spur of the moment prompt. Three minutes. Going in three, two, one. Right. This is crazy. All right, time for our spontaneous prompt to end. Finish whatever you're writing if you haven't finished it already. And if you have, put down your pen slash pencils and your keyboards and enjoy the fact that you got an extra prompt for this virtual write-in. Mm -hmm. um, we just very quickly want to say that we think that you are all winners uh, just simply for engaging in, in NaNoWriMo as a challenge. Um, if you wrote, you've won because you're, you wrote something that you hadn't before. So congratulations to everybody for winning. Um, and those of you who haven't necessarily met your goals yet, met your actual challenge goals, congrats for writing something because that's what's important here. Yes, we actually have the Gandalf stuff. We've been hiding it. And now it's on the floor again. But um, just to kind of wrap things up again, definitely feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you can get notified the next time we actually mm -hmm. do one of these virtual write-ins. Yeah, they're regularly scheduled. They're regularly The next scheduled. one is Wednesday at yes. 1. Next it yeah. should be next Wednesday at 1. Yeah. But, you know, next time we have a virtual write-in or any other um, YouTube videos that we create here on the channel. Um, 
And yeah, it's never too late to start your projects. So yeah. Even if you're right in the middle of a project and you don't like it and you're thinking about starting a new one, just start a new one. In 2013, I hit 50,000 words in 10 days. So um, you can do it. <laughs> if you haven't started yet, go for it. Although yeah. I, I am assuming everyone here is at least started yes even if it's just a, during this and for those of you who haven't started yet start your projects yeah and put a realistic goal down for your nanorama experience um congrats to those who have won yeah we'll be celebrating today because winning today. Uh, can, if you haven't won yet uh good luck on meeting your goal and congrats just for getting your writing in yes so with that, I think we can end this virtual yeah. ride in. Say goodbye to everyone. Say Bye goodbye guys. to our VWI squad. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Okay. This is the awkward part. Yeah. Bye. Yay.